Welcome to the Masterwall video training series. We continue with basic training, part four. Next, the insulation boards are rasped. This allows the surface to be trued and leveled out. Adhesive systems should set a minimum of 12 hours prior to rasping. You want to make sure to rasp the entire surface of the insulation board in a circular motion. Be sure not to just sand the board joints or it will show in the finished application. Also you can use a straight edge to level any irregularities in the wall system. At this time you can add aesthetic grooves or bands or things like that to the wall system. You can cut grooves into the insulation board using a hot groover or a router. Use a straight edge to keep your joints straight, but be sure to always keep at least 3 quarter inch of insulation board under the groove to prevent cracking. If you've mechanically attached the system, at this time you want to spot the fasteners with some base coat. This helps to level that surface and make the application of the base coat and mesh a lot easier. You may see some minor cracking at those locations, this is normal, and you cover that up with new uh, base coat and reinforcing mesh. If using the back wrap method, you've attached the back wrap mesh onto the substrate surface prior to putting on the insulation boards. At this point you want to apply base coat to the inside and outside face of the insulation board and bring that back wrapping mesh forward and onto the surface of the insulation board. Corner trowels and brushes help neaten up the job and make for tight corners. Diagonal reinforcement or butterflies are now added to the outside corners of window and door openings. This can simply be a piece of 9 by 12, either standard or detail mesh embedded into the corners at a 45 degree angle. Now it's time to apply the base coat and mesh. Make sure the insulation board substrate is level and ready to receive the base coat and mesh. This will vary depending on your applications, about a sixteenth of an inch for standard mesh or three thirty seconds of an inch for ultra mesh. Always be sure to embed the mesh into the wet base coat. Smooth it from the center of the mesh, which is typically 38 inches wide, to the edges. Be sure to lap all meshes 2.5 inches except for strong and ultra mesh. Those meshes get butted and a second layer of standard mesh will go over the top of it. When installing the mesh, be sure to cut it to a workable length prior to embedding it into the base coat. Strong and ultra mesh are always installed as part of a two layer system. Make sure the mesh is always embedded into the base coat, never pinned on the wall first with base coat applied over it because that can weaken the system. The base coat is the weather barrier, so make sure it's installed completely, that the mesh is lapped properly, and that the surface looks nice and smooth. The base coat should be about a sixteenth of an inch over standard mesh. When applying the mesh, it may be necessary to add some additional base coat to fully embed the mesh. When dry, the base coat should be a nominal sixteenth of an inch thick for standard mesh, but you may see a slight pattern, which is acceptable. Let the base coat dry at least 12 hours before applying more base coat or starting the finish process. Anytime you have exposed mesh, you're going to need to recoat it with some additional base coat. That's shown on the top photo. Marginal applications, you should evaluate to see if there is enough coverage of base coat on top of it to perform well. Also, if you're in a hurry, you can use Quickset MBB to do these common touch-ups. The base coat might not be perfect after it dries. Any minor imperfections such as fins or droppings can easily be scraped off using a trowel or rub brick. When using the back wrap method, it's fairly common to see exposed mesh at this location. You'll want to touch up those areas with either some quick set MBB or regular base coat. Where sealants are to be used, the base coat needs to be thicker than on the wall. There can be no mesh pattern or color showing. The sealant joint needs to bond to the base coat or colored base coat, never to the finish aggregate. Next we'll look at the finish application. 
Masterwall's standard finish line is called Superior Finishes. They include spray, desert sand, R-Course, Perfect, and Refinish textures. They're available in Elastomeric Plus, which is designed for stucco surfaces, and we can also add silicone and XL Mildeside to those as needed. We also have a variety of specialty finishes. In Masterwall's color chart, we have 64 standard colors, but we're also in a custom business. We commonly match to competitors' colors and most paint colors. We offer custom colors, but with a large amount of pigment, it may cost more. Deep intense colors do tend to fade more than lighter colors because of the organic pigment content. Also avoid very dark colors with EFs as it can melt the insulation board. Aesthetically, the finish is the most important part of the project. It's also the final step. It's going to make or break the look of your job. Plan your work accordingly. Avoid direct sunlight because it can cause irregular drying and scaffold lines. Always work from corner to corner or at least aesthetic joint to aesthetic joint to limit the effect of cold joints. Always maintain a wet edge to avoid cold joints as well. And while you're working on the wall, avoid overly hot walls. They're going to make your texturing difficult. Mix a superior finishes with a heavy duty, low speed mixer and a paddle. Small amounts of water can be added for workability, but do not exceed 24 ounces of water per pail. Once you add water to a pail to ensure color consistency, be sure to add that same amount of water to each pail. Applying the finishes by trowel is the most common method. Always apply the finish to a clean, dried, and cured base coat using a stainless steel trowel. You'll want to level that surface to a uniform thickness equal to the largest aggregate that you're using. Almost immediately after you apply the finish, you'll want to float it using a plastic float. Use a standard pattern to eliminate the chatter marks or ridges in the finish and to create the final textures. Most of the time, big circles, little circles, figure eights, those are common patterns, but make sure you use the same pattern throughout the job so that it looks consistent. When working on scaffolding at different levels, be sure to blend carefully between those two levels. The finish will firm set under normal conditions in 8 to 12 hours and will fully set in 48 to 72 hours. During this time you'll want to protect the finish from rain and temperatures less than 40 degrees for a minimum of 24 hours. Clean the wet finish with soapy water. It's important to note that temperature and humidity will affect drying and curing times. Low temperatures and high humidity will extend these times. If you're spraying the finish, it's required to coat the wall with Master Wall Prime Coat and allow it to dry. Keep your gun at a 90 degree angle to the wall and use a circular overlapping motion. You want to apply the finish evenly, taking care not to flood an area or make an area too thin so that it looks different when it dries. It's important not to return the finish into the sealant joints. However, if there are concerns about the base coat color showing through, you can run the finish into the joint and then completely remove the aggregate. Another alternate to this is to use our roller flex at this location. Let's take a look at doing business with Masterwall. All Masterwall regional managers are experienced in our business. Most of them have EF certifications. They're available to visit job sites, visit architects, and help the distributors. We also offer full service technical support for your projects. We don't just read the data sheet. We're there to get the job done. We can help with selecting products, submittal packages, clarification letters, plan and detail reviews. Masterwall selects their distributors carefully. We have a saying that people buy from people and your local distributor is the best contact. They can help with local contacts around the area. They can help with ordering samples. 
they're going to stock and tint most master wall materials and stock related products for the installation. If you need more information, feel free to call us here at Masterwall or visit our website and look at our online training. Please visit us at masterwall.com. Thank you. This concludes this basic training series.